What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. Got another quick search and recovery for you. You guys been asking for a commentated one, so that's exactly what I'm gonna give you. This is gonna be another commentated search and recovery video. It's gonna be a real quick one. Today I'm looking for a cell phone in roughly 12 to 15 foot of water for a young lady who dropped it off a dock. Now I'm not gonna be using a downline or a reference line or anything like that. However, I am taking my compass for navigational purposes just in case I need it, but I'm gonna show you how you can use ambient light to help conduct searches as well. So pay close attention and I'll give you some final thoughts at the end. All right guys, so here I am doing my pre-dive safety check. I'm sitting on the edge of the dock. Uh, getting a little bit more information from the uh, from the client who said she had dropped her phone in the water. And here in a minute, you'll you'll hear me ask exactly where did you drop it. And of course, I need them to pinpoint it for me so I can get a natural reference point. Exactly where does she think she dropped it? Right there where the bumper is on the boat. So this first bit of information is very important to me. I'm getting a natural reference point and I need to know exactly where it was she dropped the phone. Now as you can tell there on the screen, the bumper of the boat there, the little dock bumper, that is exactly where she dropped the phone. So I'm kind of taking a natural reference. Now the area that I'm at, I actually know very well so I know that there's a sloping bottom down there. But we're going to come back to the boat here just shortly. Uh, because I'm going to use the boat where it's blocking the ambient light uh, from the surface to help me navigate while I'm under there as well. So as I descend down here, uh, of course I'm going to go straight down and I'm only about five to seven feet away from where the bumper line is or where that bumper buoy is if you will. And so I'm going to swim directly in that uh, general area. I'm going to take a really quick look at my computer to see how deep I am. That's going to tell me what my search radius is. Uh, you've heard me talk about that plenty of times in the past. Whatever your depth is, your search radius is going to be as well. So I'm about 12 foot of water and I'm also on an incline. That piece of PVC pipe right there will kind of tell you which way the incline is going. If you go up the PVC, I'm getting shallower. If you go down the PVC, I'm getting a little bit deeper. Uh, so you can kind of see the incline there. Uh, you'll notice over to the left, just briefly, it was very light and now it's kind of a little bit darker. That's letting you know that I've actually swam too far. I've actually swam out underneath or out from underneath the boat itself. So I'm gonna have to turn around and come back in the opposite direction and get back in that shaded area. Because like I said, not only am I using the slope and bottom here as natural navigation, I'm also using the ambient light. There as I looked up or I can look up again, you can kind of see how the ambient light is being shaded from the boat itself. And I can use that as a reference point to where I'm at underwater. So of course, since I'm working on an incline, I'm just doing a jack stay search here. I'm swimming back and forth, back and forth. When I get to a point where there's more ambient light coming from above me than what there normally was, that lets me know I've went too far. I've actually swam out from underneath the pontoon itself. And then of course here, I'm swimming back in the opposite direction and I'm going back up underneath the boat. Once again, using that ambient light as a reference point for this search. And of course you can see here I'm very successful. I found her cell phone for her. Uh, a lot of you guys told me in the past, quit turning them on underwater, you're going to damage them. I don't actually turn the phone on. When I pick the phone up, I don't know if it's because there's water in the case or what it is. For some reason these phones always come on. Uh, but it's good to know that her case was at least semi-waterproof enough that it, it didn't fry the phone of course. And so here I'm just making a slow, safe ascent to the surface and I'll hand her a phone back, get paid for the job, and then go on about my merry yeah, text message. Okay. Well, thank you. All right, my su my suggestion to you: don't open it, don't mess with it, don't do nothing. Go get a bag of rice, immediately 
take it out of the case, throw it in the bag of rice for 24 hours. That's just my personal opinion on how you should handle it, even though it's in a life proof. And let it dry out. Because if you start messing with it and there's anything in it, then yeah. So, so. you've got a lot in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, say hello to YouTube. So there you go guys, as you can see it was a successful search and I was able to use the sloping bottom as my natural reference point or natural navigation if you will to be able to conduct a search and I was also able to use ambient light from the surface to let me know exactly where I was at while underwater. Guys if you got any questions please put it down in the comment section below. If you found this video useful or you liked it smash that like button for me and definitely share it. As always guys make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here here on YouTube and as always guys we appreciate your business guys we really appreciate you watching our videos if you liked it make sure to give us a big thumbs up if you're not a subscriber simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications if you want to see some other cool videos make sure to click these links here they could be scuba tips they could be diving videos search and recover videos or gear reviews once again guys we really appreciate it